Hello, everybody. Uh, so my name is Jose Alarcón, and my colleague Bruno is also joining us. Hi. Welcome. And thanks, Nico. I think the, this was a great timing. Uh, Nico did an excellent introduction to radio, <laughs> radiation oncology, so we will skip over that. But we, Bruno and I, we work at Varian. And, and like Philips, Varian doesn't produce a, a consumer electronic products, so probably not many of you are so familiar with our brand. So we, we develop software and devices for oncology patients. So our vision is a world without fear of cancer. As Nico described earlier, a, a diagnosis of cancer uh, at the moment is a, quite, a, quite a threatening news when the doctor gives you that. And we want to help, uh, if not curing cancer, or not in the short term, at least make it a chronic condition so that uh, people that have diagnosed, have been diagnosed with cancer can have a comfortable life uh, as much as, as long as possible. So at Varian, we develop different solutions. So, um, most of, all of them uh, come with a bit of software on them. So obviously the, the linear accelerators have a significant amount of embedded software. We also have a solution that uh, execute or run on, on, on our customers' premises or on, in the clinics. And then we have a cloud solutions. And all these three categories of software that we develop, they, they might uh, contribute to certain point in the treatment path uh, from the diagnosis. So once the, per the person has been diagnosed with cancer and becomes a cancer patient until the person, uh, the cancer is being cured, or unfortunately, in many cases, still nowadays, a person dies, right? So we, don't, we not only uh, provide software for professionals, for, for clinicians, but we also provide patient reported outcomes and patient engagement tools so that the cancer patient themselves can interact with the clinic 24-7 uh, and have the assurance that whenever their system symptoms deteriorate, uh, someone is looking after them. So different environments where software runs and also different safety classifications. Some of them can be the highest safety classification, uh, for example, any software that controls the delivery of the radio radiation. And we might also have a software that is not even a medical device, right? But all contribute. So we, we believe uh, that Agile help us developing a, a software that is, so it help us developing compliant software. So there's a lot of discussion about how can we make agile software development compliant or how can we apply software, agile software development in a regulated environment. So it's like trying to put control layers on top of agile. We believe that agile values, principles and practice when, when conducted with discipline and uh, they, they actually enhance compliance. So this is pretty much uh, what we are going to talk today so how how we how we see this uh, fit between the regulators regulatory aspects and the agile goals so as you know uh, regulations exist for a very good reason uh, when we put a medical device in the market we want to ensure the quality of the device so that it performs as it should uh, it fulfills the clinical needs uh, is free of defects right uh, the device need to be safe, both for the patients, but also for the clinical users, for nurses and doctors that are using that device. And the device needs to be effective. So it needs to, it needs to fulfill the user needs. So if you make a device that is safe and better quality, but it doesn't cure or it doesn't provide good quality images, uh, the device is not ready. Then uh, if we look at the, at the Agile goals, Agile, values quality by prioritizing features so that you, you, you build the things that is more important to use at first. Uh, iterative and incremental development. Uh, we don't know, uh, when you develop software, there's so many unvalidated decisions that until that software is not being used by your end user, you don't really know how you're doing the right thing. So by iteratively and incrementally building on and learning and making small experiments, you get better quality. Of course, Agile promotes productivity of the development team by focusing on what really is important and, and reducing waste, makes things more predictable. 
which is also something that is very important uh, because by having shorter iterations, uh, planning becomes more accurate. It's, it's much easier to be predictable when you plan one or two weeks at a time than when you plan a six month or one year release. And obviously, uh, Agile promotes a lot of effectiveness. So as we see, we don't see a contradiction between the goals of regula regulators and Agile. And by the way, regulators are not interested in making our lives horrible as medical device manufacturers, right? Uh, some, sometimes you hear complaints about, oh, because the submission to FDA takes so long. Uh, there are very good reasons why, why those submissions are important. So the key thing here is to understand why, why those regulations exist, understand what are the ultimate value that they try to promote, engage with regulators early, engage with regulators often, right? So I think that those are the key, key things and, and, and understand that why are we doing these activities? But we will talk a bit more about that in a, in a second. I will give it now to, to Bruno, which is going to talk about continuous compliance, which is a new concept for many of us. Thank you, Hassan. So yes, uh, uh, basically uh, what we are aiming uh, is uh, towards the concept of con continuous compliance. But what is it continuous compliance about? It's as simple as about achieving compliance from day one and then maintaining it on an ongoing basis. Uh, this concept is based on the fa more familiar concept of uh, continuous delivery, which already comes from XP and is also highly related to Agile, which is basically working so that the software is always in a releasable state by making progress on software in small changes in which each change improves the software somehow. But the key point here is that uh, all of us think about deployment, but uh, that's not what uh, we aim here. What we aim is the continuous delivery is actually focusing to the entire product, including uh, compliance. So, the, so basically the scope of continuous delivery is that uh, uh, that it's not only uh, not only indeed at deployment time, but also from the idea to having a working valuable software in the hands of the customers. Um, by continuous, we also mean the DevOps concept of continuous, which is that uh, all processes are smooth and constant to avoid delays or pauses within the software delivery process. This is also highly related to uh, to the Agile manifesto. So all in all, a way of doing compliance in a repeatable, reliable, and efficient way since day one. Few key concepts uh, that we believe are very important to reach continuous compliance are that the team shall be in control of the whole aspects of the product, lightweight processes and automation at high level of automation. And that's what we'll uh, dig in now so to be able to be continuous uh, we believe that the team shall be in control of the whole aspects of the product we need to have autonomous teams and uh, this produces the needs of having a multidisciplinary team and as well uh, to have to reduce the complexity of the solution um, what does it imply having a multidisciplinary team so it needs to have a team that is able to uh, handle all aspects of the product development so that the, there are no delays, there are no handovers, there are no coordination uh, problems. This often means that uh, you need to take people from different specialized teams, put them together, and then make them learn how to actually work. Uh, those are uh, things that uh, Agile as well, and there are many other techniques that try to uh, make that happen. Uh, because imagine having marketing people working with a back-end engineer and the front-end engineer and then so uh, uh, and so on and so on and operations and etc. So all that, all that everybody needs to work together. However, how can you do that when you have a very complex solution, when you have a huge team? How do you, how are you able to rethink your application architecture, architecture so that you end up having autonomous teams to be able to be continuous? to be able to not having delays. How do you rethink, how do you change your organizational mindset? 
uh, so that you are supporting this. How do you then reduce or eliminate the team dependencies so that you can release whenever you want? Those three concepts actually are uh, identified as the top challenges by organizations in this uh, year's 2020 State of DevOps report, which, if, uh, which is a report that is based on a survey done at least during this year for about 2,400 participants from organizations around the world who work on IT, uh, software development, and information security and related areas. Jose? Thank you, Bruno. So what we believe is that in order to achieve com continuous compliance, uh, we need to be compliant at every small increment, at every level of software development. Uh, this is a concept that is well aligned with the Technical Information Report uh, 45, which is a document produced by the Association of Advancements of Medical Instrumentation, I think is the, the name of the organization. So basically, this document tries to map the activities and processes defined in the IEC standards uh, for medical device software development to an iterative and incremental uh, development process. So if you look at the standard and you see the, these activities, you might get the impression that they need to be performed in a linear manner. Uh, however, the standard doesn't, doesn't tell you, doesn't talk about the, what, what, mo what model of SDLC you should be using. So tier 45 address this and clarify how you can uh, be compliant with the standard uh, while doing incremental and iterative development using agile or any other, whatever process you, whatever methodology you are. So, uh, we need to be compliant at the story level, at the increment level, and at the release level. So every time a developer picks a Jira item, works on it, and produces code, together with that, uh, there needs to be a certain level of documentation, certain level of design, certain level of architecture, change management, uh, review. All that things, uh, as we learned earlier this morning, you need to have this kind of binary ID, right? That, that you have unique you can trace a change to why the change was made and where the change was verified. Then uh, you check those different individual stories to build a product increment. At that level, you might have another layer of verification, another layer of documentation that needs to be produced, and so on, and all the way until the release. Once, once you put that piece of software into your customers, right? They, they, that including validation. So, so this is the key thing that uh, whatever verification you do at the story level will contribute to the increment. So you don't need to repeat exactly the same step. You can, you can take credit from the work that you have already performed. In the increment level, you might do a different kind of verification. You might do more like integration type of performance type of work, right? But the, the, the important thing is that all those activities are really equally important. The things that the focus at different layers is in different places. And then what we believe is super important is that all production changes flow through the same process. We don't have exceptions. This is something that regulators love because as we discussed again earlier this morning, a regulators with an auditor will come and ask you, what is the process you use to, to develop software? Can you provide me evidence that you follow that process? So by having automation and, and having all changes regardless of whether it's a new feature, whether it is a bug fix, whatever is, in, in the worst case, a recall, right? <laughs> through flowing through the same process, through the same machinery, uh, uh, provides automatic traceability and and, autom and automated verification, right? Uh, when when you have automated all those uh, aspects. Uh, and why is this important? Uh, well, one thing is that uh, when you when you have a problem, when when something is not working as it should, you don't want to improvise. You want to use a process resolution, problem resolution process that you have tried and you are comfortable with. So by practicing this process during your day-to-day -day work, you are in better situation, better prepared for when things don't go well, so that you, you know you can trust that the process that you have in place will help you move forward. Uh, I will give it to Bruno to continue talking about automation at different layers. Yes. Because I mean, all this, uh, all this that uh, Jose has just been talking about, about uh, uh, about the uh, compliance through the sum of all parts, it, 
it, you can make it efficient. The only way that you can make it efficient is through high level of automation. And well, as well, uh, backing this up, uh, according to that same uh, 2020 status DevOps report, so high level of automation, uh, well, that reports that uh, high level of automation uh, makes people more confident in producing change. And reasons being could be that uh, thanks to continuous testing, so anybody and the team can add value, especially a software engineer can add value by knowing that it's backed up by a good harness of regression tests, giving instant feedback without having to wait, especially if those tests are brought in as early as possible in the development uh, pipeline. Or that thanks to com automated compliance that uh, Jose was talking about. So uh, you know that the work that is done is automatically traced, signed and reported. And there are no exceptions because all changes, whatever their nature, are treated the same way. This, you can imagine that brings quality to a, to a different uh, league, different level. What about continuous delivery? So that uh, at the point of release, so you, at the point that you decide that the team, uh, that the autonomous team decides that uh, now it's time to do a release, you just press a button and then the customers are already enjoying about it. It doesn't really matter, you don't need to coordinate. It just simply works by using machines to uh, to what they are uh, used for. And then last but not least, uh, the automated product analysis. So imagine that when you are doing retrospectives, uh, you have access to all the product analytics to be able to evaluate your work and the way evaluate your work, evaluate the way that you work and to improve. Throw in your experiments and find out how can you, uh, how, how did they work? In a in automated manner, without having to have any person doing that job for you. So all in all, it's basically use uh, use the power the power of continuous compliance by repeatedly, reliably, and efficiently way delivering compliance software. As well, we would like to add that uh, also in that very same report also highlights that fact that uh, that is highly manual approvals uh, or manual signing processes decreases the, man the change management efficiency up to nine times. Jose. Thank you, Bruno. So this is our last slide. And to summarize this talk, uh, what, what we believe is the benefit of uh, using agility, engaging with DevOps, RevOps practices, continuous compliance, is that we will build trust and increase trust at the organization level which will allow uh, teams to innovate and to, to try out different things because they know that they have a tooling to support them and to, to help them find it when finding issues and to, and to, to get their, their innovation faster to mass market. Uh, it will help us build trust with our customers because whenever we make a release, they they know that this release will not break their existing workflows, that is going to be perform performing, that is going to be new improvements that are useful and valuable for them. And, and obviously we will build trust with regulators by producing a automated evidence uh, of uh, follow, or that we, we follow our uh, SDLC when, when we develop software by, by having all these uh, automation in place and having all these uh, audit logs creation part of our, our pipelines. So Bruno, you can finish this talk today. Uh, all in all, what, oh, yes, uh, Jose. All in all, what we are aiming or what we are explaining here is that basically use the machines for what they are good at and use people for, for what they are good at. So use machines for doing the repetitive work, for contributing big parts of the continuous compliance on the continuous testing, on the continuous delivery. I saw in the comments that uh, we, we must not uh, forget about the, the human aspects. Definitely, I was trying not to say that, uh, that uh, human aspects uh, that, uh, that uh, for instance, like validation is not needed. Yes, definitely it's needed. The humans to explore, to test around it, to use the creativity uh, to do that, not to do, not to do the re repetitive work. So basically use the machines to be able to, uh, to, to do what they are good at and to reduce the level of the amount of surprises 
that our customers may find so that then they will be happily accepted new versions because they know that the product will be better. Auditors, same, same. They know that it's going to be less risk in, uh, in, 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 in the new releases. And ourselves or the engineering teams know that uh, can spend more time in trying to think, try to be creative, try to explore, try to think out of the box. In fact, try to aim to produce a product that customers love. Thank you very much, Bruno. Now I think we we have time for for a few questions. Uh, we have a few minutes left. Yes. So there has been a, a pseudo uh, conference going in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many discussions that I was always losing the track. But uh, first question. That's, that's excellent that this that this is happening. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's so the point. first question is to Bruno. Uh, so there there. There was a missing link for the DevOps, uh, state of DevOps, and, and there's no Puppet and, and a Google uh, state of DevOps links being shared. So was I the one, uh, the one that you were saying, or mentioning in the talk? Yes, I was. I was referring. I think the last one in the the Puppet one. But... Yes. Okay. Good. And then um, Katia is is pointing out that kind of. I feel that the key is to automate all verification, except from reviews of very few manual tests. Um, and that's kind of how the uh, engineer can make sure that the software is fully including the system requirements, but of course there's the legacy software that has problems, but then again, verification should not be the only key to measure quality. Any comments to this? So you kind of covered yes. it in a way. If I may say, if I just a second. Um, Yes, uh, I saw in the morning, uh, Miko, uh, I think it was called Mike, sorry. Mike was also introducing the concept of, uh, of this uh, control, human controls in there. So clearly uh, we didn't uh, talk about that. We wanted to pass the message or emphasize more the message on the automated and DevOps, but clearly I fully agree with that vision, for instance, that, uh, mm -hmm. that Mike was talking about in the morning. Any, any additions there, Jose? I fully agree. I think that uh, when we when we talk about automated testing and specific the uh, automated verification, not not so so the purpose of verification is to to ensure that that your implementation fulfills what what or meets your design, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so so uh, there are certain things that can be easily automated, but some things like some end-to-end -end cases that it might not even be beneficial to automate because the effort the effort to automate is not going to pay back uh, what it takes to run it manually. Plus, uh, when you, you need to do some sort of exploratory testing where you use your creativity and, and your test skills to, to produce a script that then later you can automate. But I think mm -hmm. that this requires a, a, a fine balance between automation plus human testing uh, being performed at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so there's one last question before I let this lose. <laughs> this is already there. So uh, there's a question about like how to automate the mandatory regulatory documentation. So it's fine to kind of have that. Yes, this software works correctly, but how to actually prove that it works correctly? Any well, ideas? Without going to tools to support this, uh, one. One way is to to treat all documentation as code, right? So uh, treat your your system designs, your software configuration management plans as code. So have them in your code repository next to the code. You have a doc folder where you have all those documents and and use some markdown language. Uh, whenever you are going to do a release, one of the steps, one of the artifacts you're going to produce is a PDF or or a doc format document out of those. Uh, markdown languages, but it, I like a lot what uh, Vlad says in the in his presentations about the the compliance archaeologists, right? What we want to avoid is someone that comes and try to dig out two months of work or three months of work and say, why this engineer did this change here and try to dig out and then keep a documentation update. So yeah. the, the update needs to happen continuously at the same time that code change, right? So yes. then, yeah, that's a key concept here. Uh, just to add this compliance sort of the sum of all parts. I mean, uh, think small, but uh, have it all linked uh, so that then uh, you do the change when you do the change, and then it's all related in it in a way. Yeah. 
So we have interesting new professions today. We have like investigator of things by here and then a soccer archaeologist. So <laughs> any, anybody want to add any new professions to that list? <laughs> hey, thank you, Jose and Bruno. It was really interesting topic and there's a lot of discussion going on in the chat. So go and join that. <laughs>